Hi guys, it's Carrie, and today we are going to be talking about the problematic book Eleanor and Park. And I want to preface this just by saying that anything that I'm talking about in this video has already been brought up by many creators and many years ago. I'm going to be linking a lot of stuff in the description box, whether it is Twitter threads or YouTube videos by people who have been active talking about this for a very long time. So please check the description box for that. But why am I talking about it eight years later? It was published in 2012, written by Rainbow Rowell. And I actually have multiple reasons. First off, I was actually planning on making this video in general because I just started a, a booktube channel. And on my other channel, whenever my husband shows up, we will occasionally, not often, but often enough that it annoys me, um, we'll get comments saying that we are Eleanor and Park because I have red hair and he's Korean. Love that. I didn't want to make like a whole separate video on my other channel about that because it wasn't really a big deal. But with a new book centric channel, I thought, wow, I could finally talk about why this book bothers me so much. And then I saw, I think it was last week, they announced out of the blue that this book is going to get a film adaptation. So I thought it was a great time. The conversation is starting up again and I wanted to talk about it because I saw a lot of people who they had read the book maybe eight years ago and they loved it. Like whether the problematic stuff went over their head, maybe they didn't realize it at the time and they were really excited about the film. And when they started to discover these conversations about how there's actually a lot of issues with the book, they were really surprised and shocked. I had a couple people in my inbox being like, whoa, I hadn't even thought about this book in like eight years and I'm really, I'm really shocked by that. So I'm hoping that this video and other conversations that are happening right now will kind of remind people that if they're really excited for this film because of a book that they liked when they were in middle school, let's talk about it. Let's talk about why we might not be loving this film. And the last part to my intro, I promise, I just want to reiterate that if a community, whether that community is based on a race, an ethnicity, a sexual orientation, a shared experience, if that community comes forward and says that something is harmful or hurtful to them, um, let's all get better, myself included, let's all get better at listening the first time and amplifying that conversation. That being said, again, please check the description, especially with this book. Um, there are a lot of Asian American voices that talk about how this is actually hurtful to them as a person. So, um, check it out. Now let's talk about it. So I'm going to break this video down into three parts. First, just a little intro to the plot and why some major themes in this book are just, why are they there? Number two, I'm going to read some of the more problematic passages from this book. Um, there aren't going to be spoilers. It's a teen romance, so I don't think a spoiler is that Eleanor and Park fall in love. There you go. <laughs> Spoiled. Ah. Finally, number three, I'm going to just give my general feedback because I did finally read this book and talk a little bit about what I hope the film adaptation might do. Let's just jump right into it. Eleanor and Park, published in 2012, written by Rainbow Rowell, is about Eleanor and Park, two teens growing up in Nebraska in the late 1980s. So Eleanor is brand new to school and she meets Park on the school bus because his seat is pretty much the only seat available. And he immediately thinks that she is a train wreck. I'm pretty sure those were his exact words. And he hates that he has to sit next to her. But they eventually bond over comics and music and they fall in love. So that in and of itself sounds like an okay teen romance. There are themes of like domestic violence even, like it kind of touches on, it touches on darker subjects. It just sounds like a mediocre teen romance, right? And if Rainbow Rowell had just written that, we probably wouldn't be having the conversation that we're having today. She also probably wouldn't be getting a film adaptation of it. What makes the book problematic is that Rainbow Rowell decided to add details to the characters, valid, but she took those details and she made them into huge, huge focuses of the plot. The fact that Park is half Korean, and yes, his first name is Park, it is never explained his brother's name is Josh, so. The fact that he is half Korean 
is undeniably the most important part of his character for the first third of the book. It is hammered into us every single page. Rainbow uses this to make him the other at school, to make him an outsider, to make him odd. And she tries to do the same thing with Eleanor. Eleanor has red hair, which lots of people do. For the percentage of the population that redheads are supposed to take up, we have a strangely high percentage of characters that have red hair, but that's like a whole other thing. She was constantly bullied for having red hair in this school. So her red hair made her an other, an outsider, strange, a weirdo. Basically what Rainbow Rowell is doing with these two characters is she is equating people making fun of somebody's hair color to people disrespecting a race and culture. So she's basically comparing dumb blonde jokes to racial profiling in this book. That's what that's what we're starting with. That's the story basically. But the thing is, the way that she paints both of these characters, they would have been outsiders anyway. Park is into comic books. He dresses in all black and he wears a trench coat. He eventually starts wearing makeup. He doesn't like to play sports. That in the 80s is like textbook definition of an outsider, of a nerd. With Eleanor, she is curvy. She doesn't act like the typical nice girl. Her family situation is genuinely very tragic and she doesn't have a lot of money um, and she dresses eccentrically and she's the new girl. So she would have been an outsider and weird anyway, but Rainbow Rowell decided that being Korean and having red hair had to be the things that like solidified their otherness. It's valid and important to talk about a character's race. We need more diversity in books. The problem is that for as much as his race is talked about, there should be some follow through with that. There should be maybe some commentary on his struggles as a Korean American in a white town. There should be some reason why this is the most important part of that character, but she never follows through. It's literally just so that we get a mental picture of him, which is strange. So that's pretty much the intro. We're gonna do some reading, shall we? We shall. I bookmarked these, I read on my iPad, I rented this from the library. We begin, chapter one, page seven. So his friend Steve turns to him and asks him about Kung Fu. I can't believe I'm even gonna say this. What the f does Sheridan park? What the f does Sheridan know about Kung Fu, Mikey said. Are you retarded, Steve said. His mom is Chinese. Mikey looked at Park carefully. Park smiled and narrowed his eyes. Yeah, I guess I see it, Mikey said. I always thought you were Mexican. Shit, Mikey, Steve said, you're a racist. Chapter two, I'm actually not even gonna read all of these because she says it over 12 times. Um, Eleanor only refers to Park until chapter 15. He is only referred to as Asian kid. And then in chapter 15, he becomes the cool, cute guy. Got it? Cool. To be fair, Park also calls her a dumb redhead a lot, but you know, whatever. Redheads are dumb sometimes. Chapter six, there is this weird passage where this girl is bullying Eleanor and all the other girls laughed. Even the black girls who hated Tina, laughing at Eleanor was Dr. King's mountain. Also in chapter six, we meet Park's mom. That's how Park's dad came home every night, like in a sitcom, Lucy, and his mom would call out from wherever she was, in here, except she said it, in here because she was apparently never going to stop sounding like she just got here from Korea yesterday. Sometimes Park thought she kept the accent on purpose because his dad liked it. It was like watching Paul Bunyan make out with one of those It's a Small World dolls. And this continues, um, Rainbow Rowell refers to Park's mom, who is Korean, refers to her as a small doll, like a China doll often in this book. In comparison, by the way, I didn't highlight it, but when they talk about Eleanor's mom, she is considered like a fairy queen, like not even a princess. She's so beautiful. She's a queen. She's this strong warrior queen versus the China doll. So just, just strange. Same page as Park's mom's accent. We have Eleanor's point of view. 
and she has a lot of siblings and they live in a very, very small home as context. After dinner, Eleanor usually disappeared into her room to read, but the little kids always went outside. What were they going to do when it got cold and when it started getting dark early? Would they all hide in the bedroom? It was crazy. Diary of Anne Frank crazy. So to be fair, her father is a very scary figure. Her stepdad is a very scary figure. So she, they do have to like hide from him, but to compare their lives to hiding from Nazis, I just don't, I just don't like it. It's not even used to that. Then the following chapters are pretty much riddled with Park's mom's accent. Chapter 20, this is brought up a lot about the only time that Park ever really talks about his race, which isn't often, it's pretty like anti-Asian. He has a lot of self-hate. So he's talking about his, the white side of his family and his grandma. She was so small, even Park towered over her. All the women in, in his family were tiny and all the men were huge. Only Park's DNA had missed the memo. Maybe the Korean gene scrambled everything. And then it goes on to talk about how Josh looks a lot more white and thus Josh is better looking, hotter, etc. So now we get to chapter 45, where I feel like Rainbow Rowell realized that she almost finished the book without mentioning anything of value about Park's Koreanness, and so she threw this in. She made Park and Eleanor have a pretty weird conversation about if Eleanor can name any hot Asian guys, and Eleanor can't. And Eleanor says, I don't know what any of that has to do with me, she said. It has everything to do with me, he answered. That doesn't make sense, I just realized. Anyway, no, she put her hand on his chin and made him face her. It doesn't. I don't even know what it means that you're Korean. Beyond the obvious? Yeah, she said, exactly, beyond the obvious. Then she kissed him. He loved it when she kissed him first. When I look at you, she said, leaning into him, I don't know if I'm thinking you're cute because you're Korean, but I don't think it's in spite of it. I just know that I think you're cute, like so cute, Park. Maybe I'm really attracted to Korean guys, she said, and I don't even know it. Good thing I'm the only Korean guy in Omaha, he said and good thing I'm never getting out of this dump, blah, blah, blah. And then Park says, I don't even know what it means to be Korean, he said. Well, I don't know what it means to be Danish and Scottish, she said. Does it matter? I think so, because it's the number one thing people use to identify me. It's my main thing. I'm telling you, she said, I think your main thing might be that you're cute. You're practically adorable. Park didn't mind the word adorable. So that's that. Hi guys, I'm editing this and I just wanna point out that even though it is true that throughout the book, people are constantly talking about how Park is Korean and that makes him an other, I still stand by the fact that there is an equal amount of Eleanor being made other because of her weight and her hair. Both of them are only seen by in Eleanor's case, the factor of her weight and her hair, and in his case, the factor of him being Korean, the way she writes it, it's like equal. So I think she tried there, but she's still equating Eleanor's otherness to Park's otherness, when I really don't think, if you're gonna be talking about racial issues, talking about somebody struggling with <clears throat> how people view their body, and their hair color is not the same with being like the only Asian person in your school, possibly your state. So that's that. If that's what she wanted us to get from the book, she needed to do a lot of other work in the writing than just first 15 chapters, talk about how Korean he is, the whole romance part, don't mention it, except that his whiter brother is hotter. And then at the end, him be like, everyone only sees me as Korean. It just didn't, that was lost. That was, if that was her intention, did not, she missed that target. And so last but not least, apologies. It's raining really, really hard right now. So background noise, I apologize. The first part of this video was basically my review. I think after chapter 15, it read pretty much like a bad contemporary teen romance book. It's, I mean, it's not my, I didn't really read those. I was never really into that, but that's, I mean, it was, an unremarkable romance. And there were other problematic things in there, definitely, like how Eleanor and the other characters talk about her weight. But 
I don't think it would have caused enough controversy for it to really stand out. The whole race controversy really helped promote this book, honestly. And this book came out when K-pop was really just getting really big with international audiences. So I can't help but wonder if a little bit of this was a money grab, knowing that there was this audience of teenage girls with posters of Korean boys on their wall. And I had a VIX poster on my wall in 2012, I'm pretty sure, so I was one of them. Assuming that this kind of romance where it is very specifically a Korean boy that falls in love with a white redheaded girl, um, that that story would appeal a lot more than other YA romances. I also can't help but notice that this is being put into a film adaptation when K-pop has reached an alarmingly new height. Um, again, just seems a little strange. So for the film adaptation, I honestly haven't looked into it. It was just very recently announced, so I don't know much about it, but I can only hope that they either downplay the whole obsession with Park being half Korean and just tell the romance story or get a Korean American screenwriter to fix it, to talk, to make the fact that he is Korean a little bit more meaningful if it's gonna be such a highlight. Maybe let's give more feeling to being half Korean, to being a minority, something like that. I'm personally not gonna see the film. I was. It took me eight years to read the book. So I would just say going forward, please just don't support this book and support Asian book reviewers that call out racism and support diverse writers that can write diverse characters. And that is my two cents, a bit more than my two cents. That's all I wanted to say about it. I would love to hear more about what your thoughts are in the comments. And again, please check the description for all the other people who have done really good work calling out this book. So there we are from your real life Eleanor, as people love to say. Um, I will catch you guys next time. And yeah, thank you so much for watching.